I'm Snapper Grabber, and you're watching an episode of Tackle Talk. In this episode of Tackle Talk, we're going to talk about leashes. There's a saying in the kayak fishing game, if you love it, leash it. A leash is basically a cord that keeps your expensive items connected to your kayak. So let's take a look at a couple of them. Here I've got my pliers and just a simple bit of bungee cord that I've uh, connected with a bit of fishing line to the small hole on the pliers themselves and just through to a stainless steel clip. Really pays to use stainless steel because uh, out in the ocean everything's going to go rusty or corrode. So here's another one. Uh, this is just a clip that I had off something else. I basically tied a knot with a bit of paracord and just put a barrel knot with a slip loop at the other end. So basically I can slip that over the end of anything and pull that tight and anything I drop is going to be connected because it's tied to my kayak. Here's one I just bought over in Japan. Uh, so this is a bit of curly cord that, that stretches. Uh, this one here has a magnetic fitting. So you can pull it apart and the magnet will pop back together. So it's great for something like a small pair of pliers, a pair of line cutters or something like that, um, that you're not really going to lose. And if you need to, you can detach and then connect again. Uh, one advantage I've got of this is I run a Bixby. And if I ever happen to lose uh, my magnet that turns my Bixby on, I do actually carry a couple of uh, magnets in my tackle box, but that will also help me in those situations either end. So, safety first. Another one I've got here is a combination of curly cord, oh, this is going to be difficult. A curly cord one. Um, you can actually make those out of line trimmer if you wrap it around a small bit of dowel or something and then apply some heat to it, it will retain that shape. So that once again just goes through a knot onto a clip. Uh, this is anodized aluminium, so I expect that over time that one there will actually corrode. Uh, here's another one that I've made up. Um, so it's a bit of bungee cord. There's about just over half a meter of bungee cord. What I've done with this one, and I'm going to show you how I made this, is I've got a little bit of aluminium tube. And so if you squash that just a little bit flatter, you can actually get both ends of the bungee cord through it, and then you can use it like a crimp. So stainless steel crimps are pretty expensive, um, but that's just an easy way to do that, and I've just put a bit of heat shrink over that. Um, I've got a 200 and... 80 pound swivel um, just because it was big enough to fit the cord through um, but it just allows any twist to come out of the line and a bit of paracord through with the barrel slip knot once again to go onto a rod. Here's a commercial one that I think I got from Marine Deals. Um, it just has a toggle and slips on, has a clip here it can be unclipped and a uh, brass clip on the other end with a swivel on it which is actually quite good to unravel it. Uh, here's another one that I use as uh, just straight paracord so a barrel knot that slips tight or you can loosen it to take it off and just a clip on the other end and I just wrap it around my rod gently and uh, that stays on there all the time. So the other thing you want is somewhere for those clips to go. On my Viking kayak, I've got some saddles, um, but I've also put a couple of little saddles on my tackle pod, one on each other side, particularly for things like my pliers um, and anything else, I'm, any tools I'm going to be using. Uh, but my the rest of it, I just clip onto um, where my seat can go on my kayak, um, and my knife just goes in the holder that I've screwed to the side of my tackle pod. Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick look at how I'm going to make uh, one like this one here. 
so with a hook on one end, swivel in the middle, and then a bit of cord and a slip knot on the other end. So I'm going to give you a quick brief rundown. You can actually do it where you just put a uh, clip on this end and don't worry about having a swivel or the bungee. The thing I like about the swivel is that it, it allows you to get any twist out. The thing I like about cord, and you probably want to go four or five mil, is that it's not easily going to loop around other things. And if you also do them a few different colors, then you're going to recognize what which one you're dealing with rather than if they cross over, because invariably um, you do get a little bit of a tangle if you're running multiple rods and different things. Um, but it's easier to follow through if you've got different colours. So looking at the components we've got here, uh, we've got this clip here, which is stainless steel. So this is just from Bunnings. Um, I did notice they had a cheaper brand, but they're out of uh, the five millimetre size. You can actually go down to a four millimetre size, which is a little bit smaller, like that one there. Um, they're just as good so uh, if you can find that size go for that that was about I think $12 for two so about $6 there the bungee cord was about $3 something a meter and you're probably going to want about a meter maybe a little bit less if you've got one and a half meters you could probably make two uh, that will pretty much double in length if it's at full stretch the reason I like to use um, a combination of bungee cord and paracord or nylon cord is that if it's all bungee cord and it's all stretched out it's always going to want to spring back and it's always going to pull tight so um, and also you can do the slip knot in the paracord whereas you can't do that in the bungee cord so we've got that um, I bought a one meter length of aluminium so that's 12 millimeter diameter and i've just been cutting about 10 mil off at a time uh the swivels i actually bought these in japan and they are these ones 288 pound uh size five i've got a pack of three i think for about four dollars or something like that the paracord uh this is the one i've got here uh, which is four mil. Uh, we went for fluoro this time. Uh, so you got 15 meters. That was about ten dollars. Previously, I've used this, which is either four or five mil, and also this color here. So um, yeah, so you need about a meter, 1200 mil of paracord. So that's probably about another dollar. So. I've cut about 80 centimeters of bungee cord. So this is five mil bungee cord. And the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, cigarette lighter works well for this, but just melt the ends. And I've cut 1.3 meters of paracord. That ends being melted. And has it. Just try and melt it slowly. You can. And you really want to make sure that gets a nice melted blob on the end. Otherwise the sheath will slip down from the inner. So I've cut about 10 millimeters of the aluminium tubing. Uh, this is a heap cheaper than buying stainless steel swages. Um, they may corrode over a little bit of time. And what I want to do is just bend those just out of round so that I can get both the ends of the cord through. So I'm going to put one end through, put that Just build that out a little bit. Put that back in there, and then just pull the 
wrist back just to make enough to put a clip on like so and I'm just going to squash that down doesn't need to be super super tight uh, this is just some heat shrink that I got a pack this whole pack for about $20 I think it was from Marine Deals plenty of places you can get heat shrink um, some places have some that actually have glue in the middle so that can be quite good if you um, want it to be even stronger and to seal up a bit more around the aluminium I haven't got any that has that slip that over cigarette lighter works again not completely necessary and that's that end done just be careful you're not applying too much heat and melting the sheath on the bungee cord uh, before we put the do anything with the other end cut another bit of heat shrink Slip that on, get that swivel, like I said I just like the swivel because it just takes any twist out of the line without it sort of curling up a bit and that just squeezes through there. Uh, yeah. Before I put that on, squash this. So you don't want anything with too small a hole. So that's why I've ended up with one that's probably an overkill for the rating. Right, so now we've got this end, and this end here has the swivel on it. It's actually a little bit of warmth in that. If you want. Right, so that's that part done. So the other end, we're just going to tie a knot and put our um, through there. And I'm trying to think what knot I did on this last time. So you can use a bit of this length. So even though we cut it at about 1.2, 1.3 metres long, you use quite a lot um, to make nice tidy knots. I'm not good with the name of knots, so I won't even tell you what this one's called. But just something that's going to hold it. Never going to have an amazing amount of force put on it. 
Then on the other end, what I like is a barrel knot. So we're going to do our barrel knot on the other end, which is going to look like this. And that can slide. You can pull that through. And you can put it down the other end. I like to have a bit of a tag on here so when you've got it around your rod or something like that, you've got something to pull rather than having to press on the knot and press it against the, the other part of it. So to do that, we run it probably want to run about 300 mil of it um, and I like to do it on either this bit of rod or something a little bit skinnier like a straw so we come down we come back and then we start doing some wraps so you probably want to do about seven wraps this is quite um, a thick piece of tube um, just make sure that if you use a bit of tube that the um, cord can poke in the edge. You can actually do it just on your finger, but it gets a little bit harder to make it nice and neat and tidy. So you come around, slip this down to the end. What like that? Inside, slip that over it. And get hold of that end and then just work that knot till it's nice and neat and tidy and then you've got a nice knot that you can slip down so if that's your rod you can slip it over slip that up and your rod's not going to come off there. When I undo it, you can just slide that through. Oh, grab the right bit. And slide them off your rod. Use this. So there we go. That's uh, one leash made. Okay, so that's it for another episode of Tackle Talk. And just remember, if you love it, leash it.